but anyway we nakabale we start for agreeing with uh, uh, agreeing to my uh, humble request to do a talanoa and uh thank you yeah. very much for having me uh, uh, and i was really inspired by your um you know like you were sharing all the fijian businesses and you know you mm-hmm. actually went out there and you showed um you know what your experience were so that was really something that was very uh, touching for me you know it takes uh, someone local uh, to actually go mm-hmm. out there and empower other business owners and so i thought you know i'll use my platform to uh, you know carry on that uh, paying forward uh, scenario so you are paying it forward that way and you paying it to me and now i'm going to pay it to the world um yes, you know God. Uh, thank you terry yeah. thank you big heart yeah <laughs> you know for us to use these platforms to empower i think that's the that's the most important thing i believe um, in and i'm so happy my family um you know supporting me on this initiative so to start mm. off our talano today uh, sachiko i'm uh, very keen uh, uh, for you to introduce yourself um about uh, about you and your beautiful family and uh, where you where you from where you grew up and also what you're doing now in your business okay you want me to speak in english or fijian either or let's go for it yeah whichever one <laughs> Nimbola vinaka na yadango asa chiko soro a kerea na nomoni vei vosoti asa vosa vaviti valailenga a um yeah um our sumai suva city a ke ko na yani yano koro island my lomai viti um also vakata kachiko in a vow dance company my nandi also vawati vatake enduna taikan tavu uh and saruna luvengu i have yeah so sorry if my fijian is not that great um I, but i always try because Um Teresi is such an inspiration with sharing Fijian language and sometimes I don't care whether my Fijian is broken I just always talk to everyone I can. <laughs> um yeah just so I can always practice and we always try and talk to our kids. My name is Tachiko. Um I am a dancer and I have a husband who's from Kandavu and two kids and we were, I grew up in Suva and Koro um where my family has a place and um Yeah, and I have two kids. Yeah, that's me. So, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to also ask you in terms of uh, the inspiration uh, behind Wo. Um what were the journeys um or who were your uh, who were the people that inspired you? Maybe the first question when you were young and what journey uh, that you followed to where you are now. Um Thank you so much Teresa for being interested in us and in Vo. We really appreciate um the opportunity to share our journey. Um I think basically the number one inspiration in my life have always been my parents. They're both very adventurous people like we've lived everywhere like Kandavu to Vini go ended up in Coral. Um and they just always had big vision like about what was possible and every crazy idea I came up with they were like yeah like you know they never you know ask me how's it going to work what do you how is you know like they were just like always 100% faith go you know like so i'm really um grateful for them because i think i got my unwavering faith that anything that you can conceive in your brain is possible um so we started vo i was um i grew up dancing mostly traditional dance uh my uh meke and also cook island dance because some of my um relations were here in Suva and we had like a Cook Island dance group. I don't know if you know Mrs. Lou. Do you know Mrs. Lou? I've heard I've heard of her. Yes. Yeah, she's awesome. She's a great dance teacher. Very scary when you're little, <laughs> but now when you get older, you know, she's not so scary. <laughs> and then um in secondary I started dancing at the Oceania Dance Theater under Alan Alo, who was very inspiring. And then I went to study dance at the um University of Auckland in New Zealand. Uh, which was an amazing very different experience um because I came with different training I, I didn't have any ballet training or anything like that so it was quite a shock but I loved it I loved I loved everything came back and we decided to start this sort of like three philosophical changes in vo like 
When we first started Vo, our idea was around the philosophy of Vo, you know, like in Dunakabo, like something new, which is what Vo means in Fijian. Um, so like we wanted to sort of like make contemporary Fijian work about our urban Pacific lives. So like about the reality of living in Suva, you know, it's inspired by culture, but it's we don't live traditionally. So it was sort of like making uh, contemporary work that reflected our Fijian reality, like in this time. So um, that was the whole idea behind it. And then um, and then as we started, like we realized that if we really wanted it to be sustainable, we had to provide career paths for Fijian artists. Yeah? So that sort of changed it again. And we needed to do a lot of adulting mm. um, to make sure that the income streams that we were providing for Fijian artists were sustainable. So, you know, generating like income streams so that like, Fijian artists wouldn't, wouldn't do it for a few years and all of their parents are saying, this is a hobby, why are you wasting your time? All of this kind of stuff that a lot of artists come up against. Um, and so we were able to sustain employment for Fijian artists over a long period of time, which is awesome because now we have um, 54 employees and 26 of them are full-time employees. And even though our, our, tour, our business is a tourism business, we haven't terminated anyone due to COVID-19. Even though, you know, and they are still working through this crisis, even though like a lot of companies have terminated their staff. So I think out of all we've done over our lifetimes, like that is like the thing that I'm number one, like most proud of. Um, and it's due to our network, like everyone has just been so supportive of us and we're just so grateful um, of all of the support we've had from overseas and in Fiji. Anyway, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent. And then anyway, so we came together like after the pandemic, and because we all went into lockdown for a few months and if we got all the staff to take their annual annual leave like on half time and then after we came back we sort of regrouped and we were like okay so sustainable income for the Fijian artists that was it's a very small philosophy you know now we want to think bigger you know and like if you if you watch a like a Fijian performance like the thing that really makes it unique is like the energy the spirit and the mana of the um you know of the performance eh? and that's what like really gives the fire of a Fijian performance and um and we believe we believe in both but that there's a healing power in that you know like that's that energy that that is is transmitted between the audience and the performer you know it goes in a circle like the audience gives it to the performer and the performer gives it back to the audience and they build and it builds and you know, there's so much like division in 2020, like there's like this side and this side and they're always like this and that we just believe that this like energy can be a bridge and it can be healing, you know? And so what we want to do going forward is really investigate like how can we heal others through dance, you know? Create that sense of oneness, like, you know, with people from different countries, with people from different belief systems, with the environment with you know like you know how experiences so this is something that all of the dancers came up with together um because we're collected it's not like me and eddie make decisions and everyone follows like it's always like from the dancers decide what we should do and then we follow that way so um, that's our new mission going forward from now on. So I don't know how this is going to unfold. I expect a lot of it will be di digital, you know, like people are making more digital work, but I think that nothing replaces that live experience, experience, you know? Yes, yeah. yes absolutely. Yeah. And it's been so um, beautiful to also see the performance at the Shangri-La. Um, you know, hotel yeah. over the weekend and to see the, was it the launching or the opening of a total uh, service station? And, yeah. to, you know, to see the Vo dancers, you know, performing and going up there. And I'm thinking, you know, wow, COVID-19, you know, bring it on and Vo is still going. Yeah. You know? So how, how did that I all know. come about? Pardon, sorry? How did that all come about that, you know, even we're still yeah. on lockdown? Mm -hmm. We were really lucky and we were able to contain, you know, all of the cases, which means that now we're able to open up, you know, and have gatherings of up to 100 people. So we're lucky now, you know, like we're a lot, a lot of the countries are having their second wave now. Um, we are sort of like 
we have freedom, you know, that a lot of places unfortunately don't have at the moment. We can, you know, have meetings. And so we were able to do an amazing weekend at the Shangri-La. It was just so good to perform again. And then also we're doing um, shows in Suva. We had a, we put a, we posted a show in Suva and it sold out within two days. So it just goes to show people are like dying to go and do stuff, you know, like <laughs> the sick of being locked inside. <laughs> Mm. Wow, that's so good yeah. you know, from a business perspective, right? You are taking advantage of yeah. this lockdown and 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 the huge thanks to um, the locals as well, you know, for coming yes. over yeah. to, to support. So big Vinaka to uh, all yes, our super residents, you know, our local people for supporting uh, local businesses. And uh, that's a wonderful thing to see um, that, as you're mm. saying, yeah, the, you know, dance is like a bridge. Uh, you know, it forges relationships and uh, wonderful. Keep 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 on going, Vo. And I'm sure all of us uh, Kaivitis overseas, you know, will continue to support, yeah, whatever that you are all doing out there uh, in, in Fiji. Now, I also know that um, Vo also have a dance group in China. How are they, how mm -hmm. are they doing? They're doing so good. Um... So we have a, a company that's based in Shenzhen and they do um, performances for this massive theme park called Windows of the World. And um, so their wave hit first in uh, January. So they went into like complete lockdown in January, like we're not like allowed to leave the building, but they had three meals a day provided to them. So they had two months of that and then they totally contained all of the cases. So like it was like China closed and Fiji was open and then Fiji closed and then China was open. So. And now they're back to performing as usual and the audiences are back to being massive and stuff. And yeah, at first I was really worried about them, but then um, we're keeping in touch with the Chinese company that's looking after them and they were really, really well looked after the whole time. Wow. Yeah. And if you see on the Vo page where there's just a new um, little dance clip of their performances in China, it's like a hip hop sort of thing at the moment because they have this special fe festival. But it looks really cool. And there's like so many people. It's like a massive party. I'm like, man, <laughs> <laughs> yes, the pandemic I... is definitely not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, I actually watched it. I was really impressed. I was like, man, you know, if the Fiji gang can do this, you know, they can do anything. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yes, uh. yeah. And uh, the another question yeah, I was so uh, another question I was thinking of was you know you mentioned about the you know the connection of your um, you know the Fijian dancers you know connecting back to their villages and their coral. Um, how did that come about, and uh, what is the main purpose of you doing that? So we started this uh, research project. I think it was in two thousand and twelve. Um, the original uh, name of the project was Matangali Drift because at that time we were noticing like a lot of people were moving from the rural areas, especially after natural disasters, mm. to Suva. And then, or they come to school in Suva and then they get married or whatever. And then, you know, it's the urban drift, yeah? So we call this project Matangali Drift. It's like you're drifting the other way, you know, drifting back, <laughs> you know, like. Um, so we started this project because, um, you know, like, because we started in Suva, like a lot of the dancers that joined, not all, but a lot of them were like, you know, what, what we call like Susumandrae kids, yeah? Like, <laughs> like grown up in Suva. So they have like, had like this yearning to like go to their village, you know, and, and as dancers, that yearning was to learn their own meke. You know, but a lot of the time, the cost is very prohibitive for people to go to the village because, you know, there's transportation costs. You have to buy whales to Istanbul. You have to buy a yangona for the sevsev. We have to buy mats and kerosene and, you know, all of that stuff. And then, you know, all of that. Um, so what we did is we helped the fundraising with that. Eh? And then we sort of like every year do a research project where we will like plan it. So like we go like, Want to live around the side and then come back to Koro. We might go down to Kandavu around Viti level and, um, you know, try and help um, all the dancers know their traditional dance because we sort of have a belief that, like, if you want to choreograph like contemporary dance as a fusion choreographer, like, it's really important to know your own Meke first. You know? And um, when, we, when we come back to Suvo or now Nandi, after these trips, like and then 
the young Fijian dancers, they make work and, and it doesn't have to be about the meke that they learned. It could be about a conversation that they had or it could be about learning to make a basket or it could be about the waves on the ocean when they went to Kandavu or, you know, like all of these like details about their human experience going back um, that they used to weave into the contemporary dance storytelling. Yeah, so, and it's just so heartbreaking, like, in the recent years, I'm finding more and more that like kids are going, when we go back, that it's lost, eh? Like, yes, uh, like, you know, the guy like, the guy who knew that Meke, he died 10 years ago, all this kind of stories, eh? So we don't want that for future generations. So we're just trying to do whatever we can in a very small way for our dancers, at least for them to know that their own dance, you know? So that they can pass it on to their children, you know? And especially the role of the Ndonibuzu. Thank you, Teresi, for your help with this uh, project we did last year. Because we were noticing, like, um, we were trying to learn old mekes. But then I was noticing that, you know, the the role of the Ndonibuzu itself, that practice is also in danger of becoming extinct. Eh? Like, so when I went to the Fijian um, Itoke um, affairs in Suva and I was talking to Master Simi and um, you know like the there's only a very very small amount of Ndonibubus that is left eh? yeah, and then I was thinking man you know what's going to happen when if they if they pass away you know, or wh when they pass away you know so that's why we did that project with Rusiate and he went in, and um, met the Ndonibubu from Namosi and then he went and stayed in Benga and he went to Naitasiri and Ra, you know, to just stay and learn with the various Ndonibudus and then Sebu Sebu to ask if he was allowed to create a meke. Um, so that was like such a awesome journey for him, you know, um, like just learning. And I really believe that we need to encourage more young Fijians to learn how to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Uh, I think maybe at this point, uh, we'll speak on behalf of everyone in Fiji and the Fijians all over the world to acknowledge what you and, and Eddie has started. And I think uh, most of the time we often forget our young people, the youths, um, because the youths are going to be the future of Fiji. And the work that you are doing for Vo is bridging that cultural gap. Um, it's creating that bridge so that the older people can be able to impart their knowledge and vice versa. You know, and I think what yeah, Lucy did, yeah. what Lucy did was, you know, was the other way around. And I think that's what that's what life is all about. That's what culture, uh, that's why culture is so beautiful because there's no rule that says it has to be done from A to Z. Why can't you do from yeah. Z to A? And why can't you do from P <laughs> to Q? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and and it's beautiful to see that in our last. Um, uh, Talano with Dr. T session last week, we were talking about the urban rural drift because that's exactly yeah. what we are observing during this COVID 19 that a lot of people yep. are moving back to their vanua. Um, what is your thoughts about that? What, what, what do you think about that? That reverse rather than the it's rural awesome. urban now, it's urban rural. It's great, like. Um, we were, because um, mum was saying in Koro and some of the gang that work at my parents' office in Suva, they're from Tevuni. And one of the boys in the office, his name is Julian, he just came back from Tevuni last week. And he was like, man, this like, the island has doubled. Like, all the gang from Suva have moved back, you know? Like, all, all of a sudden, you know? See. And like, it's so awesome. Even when I drove from Nandi to Suva, there is like, I've never in my life seen that amount of like tete going on, like, you know, like everyone is gardening, everyone, you know, like is fishing and, um, you know, going back to sustainable living, even some of my friends like working, you know, like, you know, high pressure jobs in like uh, urban centers, moving all the way to Lao, like packing up the kids and moving to Lao, like, you know, like, and then all of a sudden, I would talk to one of my friends and she was like, I'm not coming back. Like, I'm staying here, like, you know? Just realizing like that the lifestyle there is so good and it's so healthy and it's so like, you know, stress-free. And it's just like, man, you know, there's a really is a silver lining with all of this thing that's happened, you know? It's really making us wake up to the resources that we have in the land and the ocean and, and you know, us being grateful for our 
you know this amazing country that we have you know yes mm. absolutely right and uh, and that's that's something uh, uh you know even for us you know living in hawaii you know even every day you know we wish we're back in the farm in the mosi uh, because we we want to do so much because we know that the thing that we're going to do in the farm is going to not just help us we're helping our community yeah. you know we're helping our yeah. community the widows and the single moms you know we can all help each other um so in terms of vo uh, going forward post covid-19 uh what what's your vision about um you know how you're going to carry on with your business and especially uh working with our young people um what what are yeah. your thoughts about that Uh well we um uh we are running a tertiary dance diploma at the moment uh dance diploma at the conservatorium of dance so we really want to strengthen that pro- that program so that you know talented uh, Fijian dancers they can be qualified there eh? you know and and learn the different um career paths like choreography or teaching or costuming or lighting and sound you know like really training dancers with different skills So and then also providing the career paths through Vo Dance Company. So last year we opened a theater um called the Vo Hub. I don't know if you've been there but you have to come next time you come back. Yes. I'd definitely. love to take you I've to come there. The <laughs> Yay! It's a 450 seat uh, theater and we do shows there. We also want to support other artists to come and perform just to sort of give a platform for other Fijian artists. And we want to develop that with um other kinds of venues as well, you know? And uh you know, just I don't know when our international touring will be back up. Like, you know, this whole thing we had a tour plan planned for Europe and Africa this year, but I'm being very grateful just to, you know, be able to still work and whether that happens in the future or not, as long as we can keep dancing, we'll be happy. Wow, <laughs> that's so wonderful. Um you know well, not me oh, I'm not sure so expired it already but you know well things can go on reverse so you never know <laughs> okay, I never know <laughs> yeah. um and so in terms of uh, you know your journey you know growing up and your amazing parents you know um supporting you growing up going to primary school secondary school and now you know you're being a mom and running your your own business uh, what were some uh, challenges that you went through and how did you overcome them man you know like everyone always asks me this question and i just don't know i don't know it's like you know like it just happens and you just kind of deal with it i think definitely like this year has been the most challenging thing ever you know like no one saw this coming like it was looking like the best year and then boo one side like <laughs> you know all of a sudden like mocha like it was just but um you know we had a we sat down with um Adi my husband and also Navi is the artistic director of Bo so he's like in charge of you know developing the creative side and he's amazing oh my gosh you should interview him he's so interesting yeah. anyway um a, so we just sat down and we were like okay The one thing we're going to promise that we're going to do is support our team. We don't know what that's going to look like because we don't know what's going to happen, but we're just going to make sure that you know everyone is okay. So we started the farm at the hub and all the dancers planting and they living off the produce from that and even that in itself was such a and fishing in the river behind there. I didn't even know Mandanga there was fish there. <laughs> it's like gari and all like big crabs like You know, so even though this year has been like just really unexpected in a way it's been just what we needed you know mm. yes you know you're absolutely mm. right sometimes it's a, a a reminder for all of us to slow down yeah slow down and yeah. uh, and uh, sort of like relook at okay where are we now uh where to now and just kind of yeah, reevaluate um you know your your plans and i'm glad you mentioned about your international plans but it's very interesting that now you are creating mm-hmm. some local you know and some fijian uh programs that's it's amazing um yeah yeah so i was just also thinking in terms of the blessings uh i'm sure your blessings mm-hmm. you know is uh, you know is amazing it can go um go over the negatives what are some of the blessings that kind of like maybe the highlights yeah. of your journey thus far um oh highlights 
Um, I think that, you know, like uh, uh, my favorite show that we've done was like, Are We Stronger Than Winston? Um, you know, like after Cyclone Winston was such a devastating thing in 2016 and we got together and we started collecting donations. Um, and we ended up with nine tons of donations at the studio. Even UNICEF had dropped off like water purification, other gang, like, you know, sanitation stuff, medicine, because they, um, cause Koro Island was the worst hit. So we were out there sort of like first, just with the generos generosity of everyone. And um, so we sort of, it was the 14 villages, so we divided everything equally and we took it out there and, and um, Patterson Shipping helped us with the transport. And um, man, Tyrese, the devastation after that was like something we've never seen before. And it was just so heartbreaking. Like we couldn't believe it. Like it was so heavy, like, you know, like, oh, and you start crying. Mm -hmm. oh, anyway, so we, we came back, like, you know, like we just carried that with us, like, because, you know, so many people, they, when you talk about climate change, it's all like up in the air, like these numbers and statistics mm -hmm. and you know, it doesn't have a human face, you know, it doesn't, you can't see with your eyes the woman who's just burying her daughter. Wow. You can't see with your eyes the guy who just got swept away by a tsunami carrying his baby on his back. Like, you can't, you know, like, and you hear these stories and you're just like, oh my God, like, you know? Oh. Yes. Mm, no, that's absolutely true. And I think sometimes, uh, such a way with the government and, or, or, or as you said, you know, it becomes like a policy or just a, a number or just a statistic, but there's a human side of it, right? A human side that most of us don't. Yeah, don't, so, yeah. yeah or maybe sometimes we deliberately try and avoid, uh, but I think those of us who work in the arts, yeah. we actually do the opposite. You know, we try not to avoid it, but we face <laughs> it. it. Yes, we face it and we try and do yeah. something with it. Mm. Yeah, so Navi made this beautiful work. It was called like because like after the second there was this hashtag that came out and it was like seeing what happened. I'm like, there's no way we're stronger than this. Like it's just beyond our like what we can imagine is gonna happen, like with climate change. So you know, Navi made this work. Oh my god, it was so beautiful and it was just telling all of those stories, like, you know? And it was really cool. And we took that, that production to Edinburgh Festival and it won an award. Like, this, there was about 3,300 productions and there's only 11 awards. Wow. And his choreography won one of those awards. So, like, like for me, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> wow. I mean, That's... I didn't do much. I just, like, helped them organize everything. But, like, it was just such a proud moment for all of us. Man. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, the platform that Vo is doing in terms of, you know, sharing our contemporary stories and involving our young people, especially our young ones who are, mm -hmm. you know, trying to reconnect to their roots uh, and also trying to identify yeah. their identity because a lot of us have mixed heritage now, you know, and that's the reality. Because I yeah. think uh, this needs to be yeah. talked about more often and more in the open that we have a lot of young people that's coming good, up yeah. who are, you know, Fijian, Kailoma, Kachaina, you know, all these ethnicities, and we need to embrace that uniqueness into uh, whatever, you know, um, work or whatever pro project that we are involved in. Mm. Um, so what's what's your vision uh, about that for Vo in years to come, uh, in terms of involving our young ones and be the voice? Yeah. And I just love what you're saying, Teresi. We need to be like so inclusive. Like, I feel like that's the key. And I mean, that's what we're talking about. Like that thing of oneness and healing is just like, rather than finding our differences, like finding our similarities. I mean, like I, you know, growing up as a Fijian woman, I had such a shock when I moved to New Zealand. I went through an identity crisis when everyone was telling me that you're not from Fiji because you're white. And I was like, oh my God, like, who am I? Where do I belong? Do I belong? Like, I just, you know, I was so depressed, you know, like for a long time, you know, and and I just don't want any young Fijians to feel like that. Like, and, you know, we have so many different um, races and, and, you know, ethnicities and it's all beautiful and it's all part of Fiji. 
So the new work that we there we're working on, this was um, that Navi is working on at the moment. It's so cool. Like you will love the sound. The score is a live sung score, and it's like inspired by like the chants at the Coca Cola games, like you know the athletics competitions and stuff. And it's it's called heartbeat because like you know like no matter like where you're from, whatever like you know you've been through, how old, young, gender, race. You know, we all have a heartbeat, you know, like, and that's what, you know, the rhythm like unites us. Like, so that's the sort of like ideas that we wanting, wanting to go into, like from here on. Yeah. Mm, so, mm. Wow, that's so wonderful. And, <clears throat> and I'm also thinking of the parents, you know, who are listening in. And I know a lot of our, you know, a lot of parents, um, you know, dream of their children to be doing, uh, you know, to do law or do they want to, uh, I want you to be a teacher or I want yeah. you to do this. And I know some of our young ones uh, have passion for dance or have passion for, for doing mm -hmm. something else that is totally opposite from what the parents want. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are your thoughts about that, for the, especially our parents listening in? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, actually, that's when you mentioned challenges. This is probably the biggest challenge that we face, you know, um, is these outdated mindsets that, you know, you have to, you know, like accounting law medicine like that's acceptable and everything else is like you're a failure like you know like, and we have so many heartbreaking stories of like talented artists that are like amazing like just you know not being accepted by their families and i'm so and like um i'm so glad navi sort of stuck it out because look at how amazing he is and we just have to change those mindsets like we had a speaker that came the other day and um and I, he, he has a daughter who's an artist and, and, and I asked him like how, you know, it's so awesome to see you as having a daughter as who's an artist. And even he was like, oh, but she has a plan B. And I was just like, oh my God, even, you know, the gang with successful children can't see it. And I'm just like, we have to change this mindset. And the only way we are going to change this mindset is by proving that it can be done. Like, you know, you, they have to see it to believe it, you know, and we have to have artists that have a long career in the arts and then you know people will soon change the way they are and have successful fulfilling career where they can buy food for their you know a house and a car and all these kinds of th things that mean like success in modern day times yeah and also like you know the age of automation is here you know in 20 years time we don't know what the employment market is going to look like accountants and lawyers and doctors are going to become automated and the ones that will be able to adapt are the ones that can be creative and think and you know adapt to a changing um you know world and labor market and i truly believe that we need to have creative subjects in vision schools you know because we come out with students that know information but they can't you know um you know put together what it means because there's no creative subjects it's there's no art there's no music there's no dance you know like we need our graduates to be critical thinkers you know you know if you you know make a painting you're like okay i'm gonna have a have a rainbow or a house and like why who are you gonna put in the house how many people what color are they gonna be you know and it, that, that that's a series of decisions so when a graduate comes out of school, they can they can question, should I start a business? Okay, what kind of business? Where is it going to be located? What should our branding look like? What the, what colors? Like, you know, like they can already start to think like this. And we need way, we need that in Fiji, especially these kinds of times, you know, like when everything is uncertain. You know, we need creative people. We need innovative people um, to take us forward. So more than anything like if i was a parent i would be supporting my child to do anything creative because i know that in the future they will be adaptable and flexible to change absolutely mm. yes uh, wow. and to conclude our uh, our talano today um in terms of vo and uh, now we're still in the midst uh middle of uh, uh of of covid 19 um, what are some ways that uh, for our listeners, you know, um, you know, maybe providing some sort of support uh, to Vo and to other uh, businesses, you know, that are in Fiji during this time, uh, that we uh, Fijians living overseas can be some sort of support. What would that support look like, uh, Sachiko? Um, like 
you know, we, you know, when when you put in this situation, it's hard to know what to do or how to help people. So that's why we've just been sort of like writing little business stories, like just building awareness about, you know, what other people are doing. Um, you know, without spending money, that's a really easy way to, I, I don't know, to, you know, help share the love, I guess. Um, so just sharing information, sharing videos or stories. I mean, if, if you want to support Bow Dance, like we have a Give a Little page. Give a Little is a, a New Zealand fundraising site that we, um, and if you go search Help Save Bow Dance Fiji, we're fundraising for the livelihoods of our dancers, which has been um, being able for us to keep food on the tables for them through this crisis, which has been awesome. And we just want to thank everyone that's helped us so far. And we're just aiming to get up to a target of 20,000 for this year. So yeah, any little bit helps, yeah. Oh, we lack of our live, no, mm. not a problem, you know. And I'm um, a huge supporter of Vo, and uh, you know, I'll try my very best to use this platform um, to spread the love uh, to all those listeners who listen in on this uh, uh, Talanoa uh, program. And definitely this is not going to be the last of our interviews. Um, you might get another email from me in the next couple of months <laughs> just to uh, do an update about Vo, uh, some of the exciting projects you're doing. And, uh, you know, definitely I will be on standby um, to share uh, some of your online stories and uh, amazing things that you are doing over there. Any other lasting comments that you want to share, uh, Sachiko? Um, yes, um, Tarisi, on behalf of everyone in Bo, we just want to say a big vinakavakalevu to you. You're such an inspiration to us. Uh, whenever we come and ask you for advice or mentorship, you're always there for us and you always help us. And like, we are so grateful to have a mentor like you to look up to. So on behalf of everyone, you inspire us and keep being amazing because we love you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>